That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of love and hate with Cicely Tyson as your hostess. Here's a preview. I mean, if I could change a day or a moment in my life, which would I choose? Yes. But if you did change it, it might not be just that day or moment. It might be your entire life that was changed. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Cicely Tyson. looking into the window of a passing bus and suddenly seen a face. A face strangely familiar. Slightly changed. A little older. But still the same face. It brings a rush of memories and takes you back for a moment to your youth and your first love. Do you consider chasing that bus and then reconsider? Thinking it best to let the past remain the past? Only the fumes and your memories linger as you stand on the street corner in the wake of the departing bus. Has it ever happened to you? Some say it's impossible to recapture the past, to travel back in time. But there are two people here on this street, walking along with the crowd, who will not pass each other by, but stop, come face to face, reunite, and do what so many people say is impossible. These two will travel back. They may even find a future in their past. Gwen? Gwen, is that you? Fred! Fred Hemming! Why, I don't believe this. Fred! How long has it been? Thirty... Five years. <laughs> Can't have been that long ago. Fred, it doesn't seem possible. Well, looking at you, it sure doesn't. Do you live here now? No, no, I'm here on business. You? Yes, I've taken an apartment here in the city after years in the suburbs. All my friends thought I was crazy to come back, but the house out there seems so empty. I wanted to be around people, lots of people. Well, you picked the right spot for that. <laughs> now, can we go somewhere? Have a cup of coffee? Yes, all right, Fred. Um, there's a little place just around the corner. Lead up. I hope they have enough coffee to cover 35 years of talk. <laughs> We're liable to drain them dry, Gwenny. Oh, oh, no one's called me that in... 35 years. Yes. I'm glad no one else ever called you that. Now they walk together. When only a few minutes before, they were two people alone on a crowded street. Fred Hemming and Gwen Jackson Rhodes. Their story really began more than 35 years ago when they were young and in love. But their chance encounter will spark a new chapter for Fred and Gwen. And that's only the beginning of our story. Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Reunion, by Pamela Russell. Our stars, Virginia Gregg and Parley Bear. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. <laughs> looking couple, the sort that is seen every day sitting together and talking over coffee. There's really nothing that sets Fred and Gwen apart, nothing on the surface anyway, but something extraordinary and rare is happening to these ordinary people. <laughs> I don't know where to begin, there's so much to tell a whole lifetime. I'm a widow now, my husband died a year ago. George and I were married for 30 years. I have a son and a daughter. Are you nervous, Gwenny? Uh, yes, very. How did you know? You always did talk too fast when you were nervous. I remember. Oh, that's incredible that you'd remember a little thing like that. Oh, yes, too fast and too much. How about you, Fred? I'm divorced. Have been for a long time. I have a boy, 28. I don't see very much of him. I never did. I'm afraid I wasn't a very good father. Or husband. Oh, you love children, so I always thought you'd be the most wonderful father. 
Remember how great you were with my little brother? Willie. How is Willie? Fat and happy. He's an insurance agent in Detroit. Oh, oh, what a daredevil he was. <laughs> yes. I thought for sure he'd climb Mount Everest or something. I never pictured Willie as an insurance agent. Well, I guess a lot of things didn't turn out the way we thought they would. Like you and me. Yes. Yeah. Like you and me, Fred. I was just thinking of the last time I was supposed to see you. It was at a train station. I'm not sure it's such a good idea to look back, Fred. And but it's so clear still. It, it, it's not like a memory that... The past is like yesterday. You couldn't remember it the way I do, Gwenny. No, I guess I couldn't. I remember waiting for you and waiting and waiting. Fred! Fred, come on! Come on, Fred! We've got to get on that train. Just a few minutes more, Stan. I, I, I know she's coming. What? I, I wired her that we'd be stopping over here for an hour. When you'll be here, she wouldn't let me ship out without saying goodbye. She'll be here. Well, you say so, but you better hurry. Haven't seen her in eight months. I've got to see her. No one knows when I will again. Yeah. You two's going to get married after the war's over? Oh, yeah. We've been planning on getting married ever since we were sick. Sick? That's right. <laughs> There's never been another girl for me. It's always been Gwenny. That's why I know she'll be here. She has never let me down. All aboard! That's us, Fred. We gotta go. What time is All it? All aboard! 3.30. It can't be. It is. The watch must be wrong. Well, you gotta watch. What's your say? Uh, it, it can't be 3.30. Come on, Fred. We gotta get on that train. I'm your buddy and all, but I don't want to go AWOL with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. come on, then. I just don't understand it. Maybe something happened. I know she would have been here if she could... Yeah, well, it's been eight months. Maybe she met another shut guy. Up. Don't <laughs> you ever say anything like that again. If you're my buddy, Stan, just shut up. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Take it easy. Maybe she had a flat tire or something. Yeah, maybe so. What if she had an accident, Stan? Oh, it's nothing like that, Fred. Let's go. Jump up. They're shipping us overseas. How is she going to know where to write to me? And I suppose you could have given her the exact address today. You're talking crazy, Fred. She'll write you where she always has. The Army will get your letters to you. And how long will that take? Months. Maybe she has met another guy, Stan, or maybe she will. Oh, hey, buddy, I'm sorry I ever said that. Now look, you two have been together since you were kids. You were meant to be together. Nothing bad is going to happen, okay? Yeah. Okay, Stan. I just wish I could have seen her one more time. of his recollection of the day 35 years ago when they missed each other at the train station and their lives started on different paths away from one another. But Gwen is reluctant to look back, to talk of that day. She toys with her coffee cup and feels that he's waiting for her to speak. I could never really explain in my letters what I went through that day. I felt as if you didn't understand. You ran out of gas. Huh. Wasn't that simple? Running out of gas sounds like such a stupid, irresponsible thing to do. As if I didn't care. And I did care, Fred, so much. Your letters did change after that. And I think you were reading them differently. I think you blamed me for not getting to the station to see you. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I did. You see, it is a mistake to go back. I feel like you're angry with me all over again. I feel... 18 years old and scared and sad and shaky. Maybe you could explain to me now how it was for you that day, Gwenny. After all this time, Fred, do you still care? I mean, is it still important to you to know what happened? Yes. It's still important. I still care. All right, then. Here goes. I... I remember it was one of the loveliest mornings I'd ever opened my eyes to. It was just summer. The heat wasn't fierce yet. It was new and welcome and warm. I was so excited. I was going to see you again, finally, after so long. Eight months. Oh, it's a lifetime to wait when you're 18. Or 19. 
I know. I couldn't wait for it to be noon and time for me to leave. Daddy's big Packard was out in the driveway waiting for me. That alone had nearly taken an act of Congress to accomplish. <laughs> I sat upstairs in my room, looking in the mirror, wishing my mother would let me use mascara, but the rouge and lipstick were paint enough. Mascara would have sent Mother right over the edge and me up to a basin of soap and water in the bathroom. <laughs> so I sat and wished. I didn't put my dress on until the very last minute. I was terrified of wrinkles. The dress was pink and white full skirt, nearly to the knees. Oh, it was the most wonderful dress I'd ever owned. I felt like a woman in it. I guess that was the very first time. And I had a big white picture hat. You sent me a snapshot of yourself in that outfit. You looked adorable. No, Fred. That day, how could it have begun so beautifully and ended so badly? I, I don't think that I've ever before since had that kind of happiness and sadness all in one day. Well, anyway, to finish it, noon finally came, and I started out. I backed out the driveway. I could feel Daddy watching from the porch. I could almost see his hands clenching and unclenching. <laughs> I went blithely down the street, grinding the gears. Poor Daddy. His little girl in a white picture hat wearing lipstick and his Packard gone together. <laughs> I'd been on the road for nearly an hour when the engine started to sputter. I pulled off to the side and stopped. Stopped. Dead. I tried, and I tried to get going again, but no luck. I had no idea what was wrong. Daddy had told me there was plenty of gas. The mystery was solved later that night by Willie. He came to me and told me that he'd secretly siphoned some of the gas for an invention he was working on. <laughs> he hadn't thought that a little he took would hurt. Oh, he was so pitiful I couldn't even be angry with him. Have you ever watched an 11-year-old boy fight back tears and lose to them? It's quite a sight. Not the kind you can yell at. I couldn't, anyway. So I, I left the car and set out walking. It was hot. I was beginning to cry. I knew I wasn't going to make it to the station in time to see you. The heat was coming up in waves from the road. My curls were straggling, and I gnawed away my lipstick. Thank goodness for Mother's ban on mascara, or why I would have cried it all down my face. As it was, I must have been quite a picture when I ran up to the station. Please, could you tell me what train that was? Uh -huh. Oh, yes, yeah, a westbound, miss. But I was supposed to meet someone going on that train. Well, Fred, you're a little late. I can't even see my just hair. Uh -huh. Well, what's that? Hey, you all right, miss? Yes. I wonder, could you tell me where there's a telephone? Oh, sure. Right over there, miss. Thank you. Hi, Fred. Goodbye. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. again after all these years. Well, I remember crying in my room for days and days. My mother kept saying, Gwen, stop being foolish. You'll see Fred again. But I didn't believe it. I just knew I'd never see you again. But you were wrong. Here I am. And here I am. Oh, Fred. It should have been more than a silly, empty gas tank that kept us apart. It was more than that. I guess so. That Gwenny, better late than never. Would you like to have dinner with me tonight? Oh, I'd love that. I don't suppose you still have that white picture hat. <laughs> no. I'm afraid not. It was sold for a dime at the Briardale School Remage sale in 1957. <laughs> can I come to dinner without it? Come any way you can, Gwenny. Just come. at the coffee shop. He to his hotel and she to her apartment. Tonight will be their first date since they were 18 and 19 years old. Now they are adults in their 50s. How have the years changed them? Can they come together again after so much time apart? Hello, Mom. 
mother. Oh, uh, Sandy, hi. I've been trying to reach you all afternoon. I was getting a little well, worried. I just walked in the door. In fact, it's standing open. Well, go close it, for goodness sake. Anyone could walk right in. Who is whose child around here, anyway? Mother, will you please just go and close the door? And put the chain on, too. All right, just a minute. I've battened down the hatches and all is secure, Captain. Good. Where have you been all afternoon? I ran into an old friend. That's nice. What's her name? Do I know her? Well, it isn't her. His name is Fred Hemming. And no, I'm sure you don't know him, dear. Who is he? An old friend. So you've said, but who is he? I mean, what is he to you? What is the relationship? Friendship, Sandra. You're my daughter and I love you dearly, but you're being very nosy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pry into your private life, Mother. Well, I think you're just a little shocked that I have one. I only called to ask if you wanted to come over and have dinner with Hal and me and the kids tonight. Would you like to? I have other plans. I'm sorry, Sandy. Could we do it tomorrow night? Of course. You know you're always welcome here. That's nice to hear. Well, I guess I should let you go. You probably want to be getting dressed or something. I wish you'd drop that wounded tone. Yes, I do have a dinner date tonight with Fred Hemming. Fred is from my hometown. We grew up together. Do you approve, Sandra? It's not really for me to say, is it? No. It really isn't. But I was sure you'd have some comment anyway. I think it's very nice that you're going out. Is that all? I hope you have a good time, Mother. Thank you, dear. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, Mother. She thinks I'm an old fool. Well, I probably am. I wonder if Fred's as nervous and excited as I am right now. Messages for me, Fred Hemming, room 920. I'll check, sir. Thank you. Well, there you are, Fred, old man. Have you been hiding all afternoon? Your messages, sir. Thank you. They've really been piling up, old man. I've been on the phone to Los Angeles ten times in an hour. Looks like that oil merger's shaping up. While you were out playing hooky, I had my nose to the old grindstone. Where were you, Fred? I ran into an old friend. Ah, that sounds interesting. Has this old friend got a, an old friend for me? What would your wife say to that, Jack? Well, she's a thousand miles away, and what she doesn't know won't hurt her. Tonight, I'm just as footloose and fancy-free as you, Fred, so how about it? Why don't you see if your friend has a friend for me? I don't think so, Jack. Yeah, you don't approve, huh? Since you asked me, no, I don't. Now, you don't have to take that holier-than-thou attitude with me, Fred. This is old Jack, remember? Don't try to tell me that before the divorce, you never went out on Eleanor. It's none of your business, but I didn't. Come on. Yours and Eleanor's battles were famous. I caught a few of them myself, and it seems to me that at least one was about a certain blonde secretary. I never claimed that my marriage was perfect, Jack. Far from it. But Eleanor was jealous over nothing. It wasn't other women that broke us up. Um, listen, why don't you fill me in on that Los Angeles deal? I've got some time before I'm due anywhere. And uh, where are you due, Fred? Your friend's apartment? One of those friends that didn't break up your marriage? Jack, let's talk oil. So what's the big secret? You're divorced now. I don't want to talk about it, Jack. It's something special. Really special. The best thing that's happened to me in years. Again, this will have to do. Hello, Fred. Come in. You look lovely. Oh, thank you. Here, these are for you. Oh, what beautiful roses. Yellow, my favorite. I remember. <laughs> I'll get a vase. Sit down, Fred. Would you like a drink? Uh, no, thanks. Hey, this is really a nice place. I'm comfortable here. It looks like you. Well, I sold everything after George died. Maybe people thought I was being callous, but I wanted to start new. The memories attached to all our things were sweet and unbearable. I knew if I stayed among them, I'd never do anything again but remember, and I didn't want that. I think you were right to do what you did. And very brave, Gwenny. Well, don't think I burned my bridges and never looked back. There were many times when I wished I was out at the old house with all the furniture and memories. But I haven't wished myself back in quite a while. This is where I live now. I admire you. <laughs> you should see my place. 
When anyone first sees it, they think I just moved in. And I've lived there for six years. Oh, Fred. It's true. There are still boxes to be unpacked. There's hardly any furniture. But I'm rarely there. I just camp. I'm usually traveling on business. I, I have no home, really. I'm sorry that you don't. It's a nice thing to have a home. Why is it so easy to talk to you? <laughs> I don't know. It shouldn't be. By all rights, we shouldn't have a thing to say to one another. Two people who knew each other when they were kids, 35 years between conversations. We should only be able to talk about the past. We did that this afternoon. And you didn't want to? No, I didn't. This last year, I've been trying an experiment, living completely in the present, day to day. I like it. So much of my life had been planning for the future. I have no intention of spending the rest of it looking back. No more reminiscing tonight. Do you want to, Fred? No, I really don't. I loved the memory of the girl you were, Gwenny. Now I realize I like and want to get to know better the woman you've become. Thank you. Are you hungry? Yes, I am. I made reservations at Le Chateau. Oh, how elegant. Le Chateau and yellow roses. You spoil me. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Shall we go? I just hate double locks, but my daughter insisted that I have all of these and the chain, too. Oh, she's concerned about you. She's smothering me. I thought that's what overbearing mothers did. Just my lot to have a maternal daughter. It's better than being ignored or forgotten, I guess. <laughs> You're right. Of course, and Sandy's a dear. But you should have heard her reaction to this evening. <laughs> to your going out? Yes. I'm having a date, of all things. You see, I'm supposed to play bridge and go to concerts with my lady friends and dinner at Sandy's house twice a week. I'm not supposed to go out with men. Here's the elevator. According to Sandy. Yes. I can understand the difficulty. For years, I was the one who drove everyone to ballet lessons and baseball practice, attended PTA meetings, and baked brownies for the charity bazaars. I was mom. Now, all of a sudden, mom takes an apartment in the city and begins to date. No wonder Sandy's confused and a little upset. I've become a person, not just a mom. Are you happy, Gwenny? Mm, I think I am. Are you? No. Why? I hate to tell you. Tell me what. I tried your experiment for too long. What do you mean? I've been living day to day for too many years. It's fun at first, especially for people like you and me who were raised to be so responsible and solid. But it wears off. At least it has for me. I want a future. I want to think about it and plan for it. You mean I'm just going through a stage, Fred? That this won't last? Maybe it will for you. Shall we get a cab? Oh, I'd rather walk if you don't mind. Sure. Walking at night is something I really miss. It's not very bright to go out alone on these streets after the sun goes down, so I don't. But I do miss it. George and I lived here when we were first married. It was later that we moved to the suburbs. Oh, the city's changed a lot. But there's still a feel to it that I love. It's stayed the same, that feeling. I guess that's one of the reasons I came back. I wish I could still prowl around at night. That's when the feeling's strongest. It's truly the city then. And I guess the muggers think so, too. They're the only ones who get to enjoy it anymore. Do you have any regrets? Doesn't everybody? Don't you? Yes. But do you, Gwenny? Yes. What's your biggest one? You mean if I could change a day or a moment in my life, which would I choose? Yes. But if you did change it, it might not be just that day or moment. It might be your entire life that was changed. That's true. You know the day that I would change in my life if I could, Fred? No, I don't. Yes, you do. Tell me. I would change the day at the train station. I wouldn't have run out of gas. I would have seen you. That's the day I'd change to, Gwenny. I'm glad that we can't. Why? Because if we could, we probably wouldn't be here tonight. And together. I choose tonight, Fred. How about you? Yes. I do, too.
having dinner together as they have for the past five nights. But this night is different because Fred's business is completed and he's leaving tomorrow. This is his last night in town, their last night together, unless one of them can find the words to express what both are feeling. Cicely Tyson again. And here's the concluding act of reunion. I love this restaurant. Yes, it's nice. So you wrapped everything up. Did it all go the way you wanted it to? Yes. It's worked out very well. I might even say perfectly. This has been a perfect trip. I'm glad. But I'm sorry that... Well, I'm sorry that you're going. Gwenny, would you like to order now, madame et monsieur? Could you give us a little more time? Oh, but of course, monsieur. I wish you really could. What? Give us a little more time. I wish we'd staying a little longer. Just a little? Mm. A lot longer, Fred. Do you really think we need more time? Yes. I don't. I'm very sure right now. Of what? I want you to come with me, Gwenny. I don't want to leave you here. I don't want to lose you again. Fred, we've had five wonderful days. But do you think we really know each other? I know that we can laugh together and yes. talk together. I know that I've been happier these last few days with you than I've been since I was a kid. Come with me, Gwenny. Will you? I was afraid you were going to ask that tonight, but I was even more afraid that you wouldn't. So what's your answer? I don't know. Good answer. I'm sorry, Fred, but I... I don't know. Truly, I don't. I'm trying to think how Sandy, my daughter, would feel about it, and my son. I'm not alone in this world. Neither are you, Fred. I believe we should consider our children's feelings. What about your son? What would he think about all this? I haven't the foggiest idea. I never could understand Michael. He lived with his mother after the divorce, and I, I, I tried, Gwen, to keep in contact with him. But it was impossible for me to get through to him. I gave up. How could you give up on your son? After he ran off to join some crazy religious cult, I didn't know what else to do. I, I thought of sending one of those deprogrammers after him, but I decided against that. I wouldn't have known what to do with him even if I'd gotten him back. I saw him once. He had his head shaved, and he was wearing some kind of toga. He talked in riddles. I couldn't understand a thing he said. And he was too far gone to ever bring back. So you let him go? Yes. Oh, I don't believe they're ever too far gone, Fred. A few years ago, my son nearly died of a barbiturate overdose. I almost let go. But how do you let go of the hand of your 17-year-old son when he's lying in the back of an ambulance more dead than alive? How do you turn away from that? How do you make the judgment that he's too far gone? I didn't know how to do that, I guess. I held on to him. I held on to his life for him until he wanted to do it for himself again. I don't think I did anything extraordinary. I was just being his mother. He's back in school now, doing very well. He'll have his master's degree soon. And you're worried about what he'll think of us? Not worried. Concerned, yes. And I don't know where my son is. That makes me a bad parent and you a good one. Well, different anyway. Very different kinds of parents, you and me, Fred. People too, maybe. Maybe. Fred, we loved each other when we were children. That's been nearly 40 years between then and now. Do you think we can bridge all that time? I don't know if we can or not. But I'd like to try. Would you? I would, but... I'll tell you what. Something's just come to me. Call me an incurable romantic. I deserve it. But here's the plan. Now, don't give me any answer tonight. My flight leaves tomorrow at 3. If you decide to come with me, be at the airport. And if not, then you won't be there. Are you giving me another chance to meet the train? Yes. And this time you'd better make it. This is the last chance, then? We were incredibly lucky to be given this one, Gwenny. I don't think there'll be another. You just don't get that lucky in a lifetime. All right. I like your plan. We'll do it that way. Okay. 
No more discussion tonight. Tomorrow, we'll know all about tomorrow. How many more times are you going to pack and unpack that bag? It's only noon. You must have done it a dozen times already. What's wrong with you anyway? 53 years old and you're acting like a schoolgirl. What'd Sandy say? What difference does it make really what she'd say? It's your life, not hers. Yes, that's right. Your life. You can make a fool of yourself if you want to. You should be entitled to that along with liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Maybe this is just pursuing happiness. Why should that be all right for kids and foolish for old folks like me? I wish Fred would call. Demand that I be there. Make it easier for me. But he won't. It's my decision. Mine. Alone. I'm going to go. Now, why shouldn't I? I'm going to do it. What if it doesn't work out? Fred and I are very different. I keep thinking about his son. Maybe we are just capable of a week's worth of pleasant dinners. Maybe it should be left at that. Besides, I have a life here. It's a nice life. Smooth and even the way I want it. I can't just take off, disrupt everything. No, this isn't right. It's crazy to even consider it. I can't go. I can't. Who could that be? Oh, I hope it's not Sandy. Hello? Hello, Mother. Sandy, hello. How are you? You've been so busy lately. It seems like ages since we talked. I think it was day before yesterday, Sandy. Well, how are you anyway? Fine. How are you? Just fine. Mother, are you getting serious about this man? Fred? Yes, Fred. Are you, Mother? He's asked me to leave with him. I'd say that's pretty serious. I guess I would, too. Are you going to go? Uh, I don't know yet. How do you feel about it, Sandy? I think this will surprise you, Mother. I've given it a lot of thought. I'll admit that at first I wasn't happy about you and Fred. But the only thing that matters is if you're happy. I want you to be. Oh, thank you, dear. That means a great deal to me. I've been happy these last few days, and I still don't know about going with him. It's a big decision. But, Mother, I want you to know that whatever you decide is all right with me. Sandy, uh, what do you think Jeff would say? I think he'd tell you to be happy. That's what you always wanted for us and tried to give us. Believe me, your children want the same for you. I was just being selfish before. I guess I didn't want to share you. Jeff would tell you to choose happiness. I know he would. Thank you, Sandy. Mother... Call me, will you? Of course I will. Fred! Fred! Winnie! Did you have to time it to the last minute? You really gave me heart failure. I'm sorry. I couldn't get a cab. The traffic was terrible. It took forever to get here. Now that you're here, and, and that's the important thing. Oh, you don't know how close I came to not coming. What made you decide? A phone call from Sandy. She told me to be happy. I think I'd like her. <laughs> Sounds like you did a good job, Gwenny. Uh, Gwenny, there's something I want to say. What is it, Fred? I know how troubled you were about what we talked about last night, my son and your son. I'm not trying to blame anyone. Please believe that. But I know that if my son had been our son, if you had been his mother, we wouldn't have let go of him. It all would have been so different, Gwenny, so very different. I believe that. Well, do you think we'd better get you a ticket? Well, I'm... Not sure that I'll need one. I think I could fly without the plane today. Come on. Did I tell you how glad I am that you're here? No, you didn't. I'm glad that you're here, Gwenny. <laughs> Walking around, waiting for you, it was, it was like going back 35 years. All I needed was Stan. Whatever happened to Stan? Did you keep in touch? 
I think we should call him right now and tell him. Well, it's a great idea, but I lost track of him. I don't know where he is. That's now. too bad. Yes, it is. Well, maybe you'll run into him on a street one day. Those things do happen sometimes, you know. Only in fairy tales and movies, Gwenny. Not in real life. No? You don't think so? Ah, no way. been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Reunion was written by Pamela Russell, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your hostess was Cicely Tyson. Our stars were Virginia Gregg and Parley Bear. Featured in the cast were Sidney Swire, Jack Carroll, Howard Culver, and Jack Manning. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Great music and more. Shows like Robert Morgan, Alien World, Spectrum, from FM 103, KMOX FM, St. Louis. CBS News. A formal announcement is expected tomorrow that President Carter has offered former Mayor Moon Landrieu of New Orleans a cabinet job. This is John Bohannon reporting on the CBS radio network. CBS News has learned that Landrieu has accepted Mr. Carter's offer to be the new Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. The President apparently met today at the White House with the former mayor to talk about the nomination. Landrieu now works for a commercial development firm in New Orleans. The Senate Finance Committee gave its unanimous approval today to the nomination of Patricia Harris as Secretary of Health, Education and Welfare. The Senate held confirmation hearings today on Navy Secretary Graham Clater as Deputy Defense Secretary and Benjamin Civiletti as Attorney General. Democratic congressional leaders are promising to give President Carter all the help he needs to keep the administration's energy package in one piece. Setbacks and challenges have been major problems for the President in getting an energy package through Congress. And House Speaker Tip O'Neill says helping the President may take a lot of work because he says the oil lobby is so powerful. But Republican Bob Dole of Kansas disagrees. I don't know where they are. They're supposed to be all over the hill, the oil lobby. Uh, I haven't been uh, invaded by the so-called oil lobby. Uh, we have uh, in our state of Kansas uh, oil production. I uh, hasten to add the average production is about three barrels per day. So we're not big producers in my state, but uh, they've contacted me. They're concerned about uh, taking away too much of the what, they, what President Carter calls the windfall. The Senate Finance Committee has postponed further action on the president's request for windfall profits tax on oil, and senators from both parties are predicting that President Carter will have to accept a weaker version than the one he's asking for. Senator George McGovern is accusing President Carter of misgoverning the nation. The senator made his remarks in Washington today before a group of congressional interns, and he also urged Senator Edward Kennedy to run for president next year. McGovern said Kennedy is the Democrats' most logical candidate. DC-10s have been flying for two weeks after the Federal Administration, Aviation Administration lifted the grounding orders against them, and FAA officials say they have reports of seven forced landings in that period due mostly to engine trouble, but the FAA says it has nothing to do with the faulty engine mounts which caused the grounding orders in the first place. Reports tonight from the airport at Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, say a Lufthansa cargo jet crashed shortly after takeoff and burst into flames. The jet had three crew members on board, no word on casualties. In San Antonio, Texas, Maddie Schultz ran into a foul of the law and spent the night in jail on shoplifting charges. Night Magistrate Mary Elizabeth Ladd ordered the woman to jail in lieu of $400 bond, but the judge who came on duty the following morning ordered the woman released. Maddie Schultz is a 91-year-old widow. More from Susan Springfield of Station WOAI. Mrs. Schultz was arrested in San Antonio Tuesday after trying to shoplift $15 worth of groceries and was booked into the Bayer County Jail in lieu of $400 bond. Mrs. Schultz says she was unable to buy groceries after paying rent and utilities from her monthly $138 in Social Security and $113 in Veterans Benefits. She's also without a lot of savings because the savings were conned out of her in a pigeon drop scheme in 1973. But Mrs. Schultz is no longer destitute. The Bayer County Senior Citizens Council has set up a fund for her and are accepting donations from San Francisco to New York. And local residents have been providing her with the much-needed food and friendship. Susan Springfield for CBS News in San Francisco.